Hey everybody! Uh, most of you have probably heard that the college is all online this fall, and so as a result we're not offering Contraband, which is normally on Tuesday nights. Um, instead we're offering a class called Music 117. I want to take a quick se second to talk to you about it. I'm really excited about it. It's something that I've been looking forward to and preparing for quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> those of you who know me know that I feel very strongly that we need to find ways of making classical music relevant and not a museum piece. I've, I've thought a lot about how to teach this class. The, the title of the class is Music History and Literature. And the idea is uh, examining great pieces of music uh, in the historical context in which they were written. When I think about what's happening in, in our own time now, uh, we, we have this great, for better or worse, it's, it's an age of political debate. So I thought that it would be a great opportunity to examine uh, music that relates to American democracy, the origins and the fragility of American democracy, meaning how did uh, American democracy come to be, what were the major influences on its creation, and um, why is it not something to be taken for granted. So in that uh, pursuit, I've chosen eight pieces of music that we're going to cover over the course of 16 weeks. The first uh, place I chose to start, which just makes sense, is the religious, the, the influence of Christianity on American democracy. An uh, outlier in the history of Western music named Hildegard von Bingen, who was a female composer um, and who was also considered to be a miracle worker, um, uh, an artist, a visionary. She had these like visions from God. Uh, next, we're going to look at the Bach Goldberg variations. I think the Goldberg Variations is one of the, the very, very best pieces ever written. But um, Bach was a Lutheran. He was a devout Lutheran. And so that's a great opportunity to talk about the Reformation, the Counter-Reformation and Protestants. Um, and, and that's a really important uh, influence in American democracy. Uh, moving forward, um, talking about uh, uh, The Marriage of Figaro, which uh, is, is an opera by Mozart. It's, it's about class struggle. It's about what... Um, people of a lower class are allowed to do to people of an upper class. Um, the, the plot was actually, the story was banned. And Mozart wrote this opera about this story that he wasn't supposed to anyway because he was a rebel. It's a piece that sort of is a great window into what uh, life was like in the West pre uh, the American and French revolutions, which takes us to uh, Beethoven, and I want to look at two pieces by Beethoven, his third and his ninth symphonies. Um, <clears throat> if you know anything about his third symphony, it was originally dedicated to Napoleon, and uh, so obviously that, that takes us into uh, French Revolution, post-French Revolution. Napoleon establishes this thing called the Napoleonic Code that was in a lot of ways a template of, of uh, uh, the concept of, of individual rights and um, the rule of law. Um, a lot of things that are really central to American democracy and de democracy in the West in general. And then the Ninth Symphony, which um, is going to, I think, open a lot of questions. Um, it's called the Ode to Joy. It's pretty clear that uh, Beethoven, if he had had his, his ways, liked it to be the Ode to Freedom. It was really, a, I think there's a lot of evidence, and we'll talk about this, to support that it was a, it was a shout for democracy. It was a shout for human freedom. Talk about a piece by Aaron Copeland called Lincoln Portrait um, as it relates to the Civil War. Um, essentially, this piece by uh, Aaron Copeland takes the words of Lincoln and the, the they're narrated. And so it's really an opportunity to talk about Lincoln and the Civil War. And that also ties directly into a, a band piece that those of you who are part of the Quebec Kunstman we were working on before COVID happened, uh, David Maslenka's Fourth Symphony, uh, inspired, he said, in part by Abraham Lincoln. So um, and then that moves us into the 20th century, uh, and I want to talk about Porgy and Bess, this wonderful, wonderful, underappreciated, in my opinion, opera by uh, George Gershwin that um, was revolutionary in a lot of ways. It was interesting that it was a flop during its time. It did not do well financially. It was one of the first times where we see uh, parts written specifically for black people, and Gershwin actually said um, on several of these parts, these need to be sung by black people. There's, but there's debate around that. There's debate around uh, whether uh, some people feel now in context that that, that uh, opera is racist, essentially. Um, and there's some people who feel 
very differently. That's basically the context, the, the brief overview of the course. Um, I want to interject into that, that uh, there's going to be a lot of discussions, and this is something I also feel passionately about, that we have to learn to talk to each other, and we have to learn to listen to each other um, better. And, and that's, I think, one of the problems with our democracy. And one of my goals with the class is to find a way to have a civil dialogue. So all views are welcome. And what I hope is that we can learn to come uh, to common ground when we disagree. If you're interested, we have plenty of spots available. Send me an email. So that is what, what I really need you to do um, so we can make sure you can get registered. My email is james.sepulveda at gccd.edu. The classes start in uh, just about a little over a week. Otherwise, uh, we, we're hoping to have uh, to be able to offer contraband in the spring. Hope everyone's doing well, and uh, talk to you soon.